Mysteries, puzzles, and enigmas abound in Canadian politics. Just take the Ontario election last week. The curia of the Ontario pundit class are still in conclave, wondering how, by what stroke of masochistic genius, the provincial Tories lost an election to a scandal-ridden, devious, wasteful, and tired Liberal government. Poor Kathleen Wynne, after Dalton McGuinty's nebbish and reckless stewardship, was campaigning with an anchor around her ankles, a monkey on her back, and several advanced copies of her political obituary pre-approved and ready for publication. Enter the Ontario Tory machine and a band of advisors that would not be out of place on the Franklin expedition. Such was their instinct for disaster. Mr. Hudak and his band of merry pranksters rolled up their mental sleeves and put on a campaign that had the tactical brilliance of Custer's famous last engagement at the Little Bighorn. To call it a deer in the headlights campaign is an insult to headlights. As a marketing effort, it will go down with Edsel, the new Coke, and of course, Suzanne Summers' thigh master. Puzzles in politics, here's one. The Liberals in Ontario right now might just have to cancel another gas plant to put a bit of balance back in the system. Nonetheless, Ontario, for all that, is a model of logic and lucidity compared to what's going on in poor, sad Newfoundland. Earlier in the week, a man just acclaimed as leader, scheduled officially to be Newfoundland Premier in a matter of days, walked away from the summit job. What gives? Frank Coleman, Premier Resignate, as one word-wise tweet put it, held a press conference at the local Holiday Inn, weekend specials available, and told everyone there he was leaving politics and not going to take the Premier's chair. That a serious family crisis meant he was saying goodbye before he had even tasted the glories of running our brave province. Mr. Coleman's departure, curious in itself, is made even more enigmatic when you learn he's the second Premier in a short while to walk away from the Sultan's Palace of Newfoundland politics. When premiers flee, what's to be said for the rest? Kathy Dunderdale, the first female premier, also grew weary of the office's toils and retreated to private life after a mere interlude as premier. The great sage of Newfoundland politics, its own Delphic oracle, John Crosby, is angry that the Conservative Party has been so hollowed out. During Danny Williams' tenure, he was the party. And his overwhelming presence, even now, overshadows everything. His legacy, ironically, could be his own party's decline. So, what does the Conservative Party of Newfoundland, mighty yesterday, forlorn and impotent today, do now? Serve as an illustration that, like the Ontario election, Canadian politics is a playground of startling ineptitudes, inexplicable choices, and never more so, than now. For The National, I'm Rex Murphy.